Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see about dead space, pulmonary volumes and capacities. So let's start with dead space. Dead space is the place where no gas exchange takes place. We know that trachea bifurcates into bronchi and the bronchi further divides into secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi and finally ends up in bronchioles and then alveoli. But the gas exchange takes place only at the level of alveoli. So the respiratory passages starting from external nares up to the bronchioles do not take part in gas exchange. So this passage is referred as anatomical dead space. And in some alveoli due to poor perfusion the gaseous exchange may get affected. So this area is referred as alveolar dead space. So next one is physiological dead space which is the sum of both anatomical dead space and alveolar dead space. Let's move on to pulmonary volumes and capacities. So the lung volumes can be studied by using a graph drawn of lung volume against the time. In a normal quiet respiration, during inspiration, the volume of the lung increases. So the curve moves upward. Followed by expiration, the volume decreases. So the curve moves downwards. So again the inspiration, the volume increases and in expiration, the volume decreases. So the respiratory cycle continues increases and decreases. So this volume of air that is breathed in and out during a respiratory cycle is referred as tidal volume. This is the volume of air breathed in or out during a respiratory cycle. This tidal volume differs for different species. In horses, the tidal volume is 9 liters and in cattle it is around 2.7 to 3.4 liter and in man 750 ml and in dog 320 ml. And the next one is inspiratory reserve volume. So let us consider there is a forced inspiration. So the volume of the lung reaches maximum. Let's assume that the last part of the curve reaches the maximum capacity of the lung. So we know this is the tidal volume and the volume over and above the tidal volume is called as inspiratory reserve volume. So inspiratory reserve volume is the volume of air that can be inspired even after inhaling the tidal volume. The sum of both inspiratory reserve volume and the tidal volume is referred as inspiratory capacity. Next one is expiratory reserve volume. Similarly, here we consider there is a forceful expiration. We already knew that is this is the tidal volume and the volume below the tidal volume is referred as expiratory reserve volume. So this is the amount of air that can still be expired after exhaling the tidal volume. And similarly, the sum of both tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume is called as expiratory capacity. We know this is the tidal volume and the volume above the tidal volume is the inspiratory reserve volume and below it is expiratory reserve volume. So the sum of all the three inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume is called as vital capacity. So this vital capacity is the maximum amount of air that can be inspired even after maximum expiration. And the volume below the vital capacity, this is the volume that is remaining even after forced expiration. So this volume is referred as residual volume. And this is the volume that is remaining after normal quiet expiration. So this is referred as functional residual volume. And the total volume covering from the topmost to the end is called as total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the sum of vital capacity and the residual volume. It is the maximum volume to which the lungs can be expanded with the greatest possible inspiratory effort. And here hence the pulmonary volumes and capacities.